Main article. Imperial Senate. Efficiency is predictability. The empire is nothing if not efficient. Every Charlie's Emperor Palpatine advises Moff's Grand Moff's Imperial Security Bureau Ubictorate Planetary Governors, both politicians and Imperial Military Commanders, COMPNOR, Commission for the Preservation of the New Order. The First Galactic Empire was a fascist military dictatorship led by a Galactic Emperor, the sovereign ruler and ultimate authority in all political and military matters of state. Aiding the Emperor was a Grand Vizier, who was the head of the Imperial Ruling Council. The ruling council consisted of advisors who wielded considerable powers over all aspects of the empire's political and military apparatus. While supposedly bound by the imperial charter, imperial rulers were largely above the law. The legislature consisted of the former Republic Galactic Senate, renamed the Imperial Senate. As an autocracy, the democratic and forward-thinking policies of the former republic became obsolete within the new corridors of power. The Imperial Senate lost the prestige it once held as the Forum for Galactic Debate, and became a rubber stamp needed for passing legislation, which could be overruled by the Emperor for any reason. In 0 BBY, the Senate was dissolved by the Emperor, effectively wiping away the last remnants of the Old Republic. Legislative authority over the various star systems and sectors passed directly to regional governors, effectively transforming the Empire into a stratocracy. Amongst high ranking military personnel, Emperor Palpatine's name was spoken with fear along with that of his Sith apprentice, Darth Vader, frequently styled as a lord, and treated with a similar fearful deference as Palpatine. Many considered Vader the Emperor's right-hand man, a living weapon, and viewed him as the natural successor to the Emperor's legacy. In reality, the Emperor planned to live forever by uncovering the secrets to immortality via dark side research into Sith alchemy, as epitomized by Project Blackwing. Ergo, the Empire lacked a clear chain of succession following both the Emperor and Vader's deaths. Following both the Emperor and Darth Vader's death, Imperial Head of Government and Grand Vizier Masa Meda attempted to keep the Empire together, while new pretenders to the Imperial throne announced their ascension to power on a near-daily basis. Owing to a lack of communication, Imperial messages surrounding Palpatine's death were contradictory. Some such as Grand Moff Lozen Tolruk of Imperial Territory G5-623 suggested that the Emperor had escaped the Death Star II through miraculous means. Others claimed the even wilder notion that the Emperor was still leading the Empire from beyond the grave. Some simply refused to acknowledge the Emperor's death for months. In order to counter the reports of the Emperor's demise, a proxy actor was installed in his place. Eventually, the truth of the Emperor's fate became known to the general citizenry. Declarations of a new emperor were announced almost every day, but none were able to consolidate any substantial power. Splinter fleets and other imperial officials fought each other to support the various claimants to the throne. In the months following the Battle of Endor, Grand Admiral Ray Sloan became publicly recognized as the de facto head of the Galactic Empire and Imperial Navy. In reality, power was held by Fleet Admiral Gallius Rax and his Shadow Council. On Coruscant, Omeda, the de jure ruler of the Empire and proxy emperor, was held under house arrest by Gallius Rax. Morn Mothma refused to accept his surrender unless he could find a way to surrender the entire empire. During the covert Imperial-backed Liberation Day terror attack on Chandrilla, Sloane's aide Adaya Wright executed a failed assassination attempt on the Grand Admiral per secret orders of Rax after Sloane refused to join his forces. Rax publicly claimed shock at the assumed death of Sloane. Instead of taking the mantle of Emperor, Rax chose the title Counselor to the Empire, vowing to act as an interstitial leader until the Grand Admiral's return. He was ultimately killed during the Battle of Jakku when his remnant forces battled the New Republic. While Emperor Palpatine held sole and supreme power within the Empire, he typically eschewed the day-to-day -day affairs of his government in favor of conducting extensive research into the dark side of the Force. As such, the mundane decision-making of the Empire's executive branch was conducted by the Imperial Ruling Council. The Council was led by Grand Vizier Masa Meda and the Emperor's closest advisors, Sate Pestage, Janus Grijatus, Ars Dangor, Kren Blister Vani and Prelate Verge. These individuals constituted the uppermost tier of the Imperial hegemony and wielded considerable powers over officers within the military. Moffs, generals and admirals all were answerable to the Imperial cadre but even the councillors were not always privy to the doings of imperial intelligence. After the emperor largely retired from public life, 
Vizier Ahmeda and the rest of the ruling council took to dispatching processions of imperial sky limos to maintain an illusion that the emperor still moved about in public. Darth Vader, the emperor's apprentice and second-in-command, appeared in most cases to operate outside of the official imperial command structure, and was noted by Moff Wilhuff Tarkin on one occasion to hold an invisible rank. This apparently unstated authority was such that even Grand Vizier Ahmeda dared not issue him orders, and shared confidences with the Sith Lord when asked. He was also apparently granted nearly carte blanche to execute those who displeased him, even when those executions upset other members of the executive branch or were high-ranking military officials themselves. However, rather like the Emperor himself and despite his authority, Vader had little involvement with the executive function of the imperial government. Instead, he tended to involve himself in military affairs, and was often personally given assignments from Palpatine. Like Palpatine, Vader considered the Empire to be a mere tool for the two Sith Lords to use in their quest for greater power in, and understanding of, the Dark Side. With the ruling council's inability to successfully run the Empire following death of Emperor Palpatine in Four Abbey, Fleet Admiral Gallius Rax proposed a new executive branch called the Shadow Council that would be a more covert and militaristic body than the ruling council it sought to replace. The Shadow Council would consist of various advisors, admirals and generals with Grand Admiral Ray Sloan as the group's de facto leader until her supposed disappearance. The Imperial Senate was reduced to the lower tier of government and gradually lost the prestige it once held as the Forum for Galactic Debate, as increasing numbers of senators became entangled in Emperor Sheev Palpatine's web of corruption, which began earlier during the Clone Wars. With the once powerful Senate firmly in Palpatine's hands, Passing legislation became a mere formality for the new order, while senators and galactic citizens were made to believe that they had a voice in galactic politics. In reality, Palpatine held unlimited executive power and was the only one who could formally pass legislation. While most feared to speak out against the emperor, a few, such as Bale and Leia Organa of Alderaan, actively questioned the accountability of the empire and its actions, much to the ire of imperial authorities. Suspicions eventually arose that Leia Organa was using her diplomatic immunity to help the Rebel Alliance. The Empire also lied to the Senate about the destruction of Jeddah City, claiming that it was a mining accident. The Emperor used Leia's capture aboard the Tantive IV, which was known to be carrying technical readouts for the Death Star, as an excuse for disbanding the Imperial Senate shortly before the Battle of Yavin. With the dissolution of the Senate, the last remnants of the Old Republic had been swept away and the legislative authority over the various systems and sectors passed directly to the regional governors, effectively transitioning governance into military jurisdiction, who answered directly to the emperor. Territories from the core worlds to the outer rim territories were overseen by regional sector governors, or MOFs, who as part of the imperial military wielded much of the power over each sector and who enforced the galactic emperor's rule across each sector. This stemmed from the sector governance decree that Palpatine passed during the later stages of the Clone Wars, when he was Supreme Chancellor of the Galactic Republic. With only 20 moths at one time, they were answerable to the ruling council, and all positions were dominated by humans. But they themselves were outranked by the position of Grand Moff, established in 14 BBY and first granted to Moff Wilhuff Tarkin, who were governors of oversectors, areas of space that contained several planetary sectors and were used to keep the moths or sector governors in control. After the Imperial Senate was disbanded, all legislative power went to regional governors just before the Battle of Yavin. After Emperor Sheev Palpatine's death during the Battle of Endor, Imperial territories fell into total unrest, with some military leaders such as Valko Pandian appointing themselves Grand Moths, while corrupt sector governors began accepting payments for the New Republic's allocation of imperial ships or suing for peace. Other governors, such as Grand Moff Lozen Tolruk of Imperial Territory G5623 and Governor of the Inote Sector Ubrik Adelyard, broke off from the Empire, forming Imperial Remnants.